Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Maintenance Motorway on Braking System Education. In today's episode, we'll look at how the braking system basically operates. So, join us as we help you understand the basic fundamentals of braking system operation. Yeah, so we have a diagram here to show you what the automotive braking system looks like. This is not what you're going to see on every other car, but just to show you. So the brake pedal is connected somewhere here and the whole work of the braking system begins as the driver applies the brake pedal, as he steps on the brake pedal, somewhere around here. The brake pedal is connected to the brake booster via a mechanism. So it's connected to this push rod, right? So when you depress the brake pedal, it pushes this push rod inside, right? It pushes it inside thereby amplifying the force, right? So when the force is amplified, the push rod pushes in here, okay? It pushes in here. This is the master cylinder, sitting right at the back of the brake booster. Now, the force that has been amplified by the brake booster comes in here, and in here, in this master cylinder, there are two pistons here, spring mechanism uh, based pistons. So these pistons would open and allow brake fluid from the reservoir into the cylinders and then get pushed out from these two pots. So these are the two pots through which the brake fluid would come out from. Right. So there is brake fluid at the top here in the reservoir. And uh, the two pistons, primary and secondary pistons, pushes against the spring mechanism to amplify the brake fluid pressure. Right. So the two lines here, the brake fluid flows through these two lines and come into the combination valve. So here in the combination valve, the brake fluid is evenly distributed to the front and also to the rear here at the combination valve. Good. So at the front here, the brake fluid moves into the residual valve and at the back too, it moves into the residual valve. Now the function of the residual valve is to hold a constant or maintain constant brake uh, pressure. pressure. Right. That holds or maintains constant brake pressure. And uh, it maintains constant brake pressure. Now the fluid moves from the residual valve into the metering valve. Now typically this system will be used on uh, a dicks and drum system. Right, so once the brake fluid gets to the metering valve, now the metering valve is going to hold off the braking effect of the front uh, dicks a little slightly. Okay, it's going to delay it a little slightly in order to allow the rear system to activate first before the front, before the dicks uh, system working. That is because the, the drum system, the mechanism of the drum system is a little slower, right? So if we allow the front and the rear to activate at the same time, the car is going to uh, dive, you know, it's going to nose dive. That means that the braking effect will be felt at the front if, uh, immediately rather than equally at the front and back. So the metering valve holds off the brake pressure a little, you know, slightly and allows the, the brake drums to apply first. Now, still at the front here, we have our flex, our flex line. This is our flex line. Usually from all the way from here, it's uh, pipes, brake pipes. But when you get to, when you get closer to the wheel, we do incorporate the flex line. Right, so fluid from the metering valve goes through the flex lines into the calipers. Now here, this is a caliper, right? So this is a caliper. And this is the flex line we are talking about. Now the brake fluid enters into the flex line, into cylinders and pistons here. The, this is a cylinder and you have pistons inside. So this is a, a floating type of caliper, right? Which has two pistons in here, right? The brake fluid comes through the flex lines into the brake cylinders, pushes 
the pistons out, right? The pistons move out and then press the brake pad against the brake discs, right? So you get the picture, fine. Now let's move on to the back. So the fluid comes through the residual valve, which holds or maintains the brake pressure. And then it leaves the residual valve, goes through the adjustable proportioning valve. Now here at the adjustable proportioning valve, you can uh, adjust the braking effect, right? You can adjust it to prevent the wheels from locking up. Yes, and then the, the brake fluid goes out of the adjustable proportioning valve through the brake lines, gets to the T fitting. Now we have two wheels at the back here and we need to split this one line into two. So that is the job of the T fitting. If it splits the, the brake line coming to it into two, one to the left and one to the right. Now the brake fluid goes through this end into the brake cylinder here at the back. So here I have a brake drum system just like this one and this is the wheel cylinder. This is the wheel cylinder. So the brake fluid comes through this hose through the back here into the cylinder. Now you can see that we have shoes on this side, a shoe on this side and a shoe on the other side. So when the brake fluid comes in here, it pushes the pistons in here. There are two pistons in here, one on this side, one on this side. It pushes the pistons out, thereby pushing the brake shoes out against the inner walls of, of the drum. This is the drum. So the brake shoes will be pushed against the inner walls of this drum, thereby producing a braking effect. All right, so that's about our diagram here. As I mentioned earlier, this is not what you'd see typically on every other car. Of course, some cars or recent cars do incorporate the ABS system. Uh, does. So basically, this is what the ABS system does. It prevents the wheels from locking up, right? Say you are speeding and there's an object in your front. You don't want to speed straight into the object. Whilst you are braking, you want to be able to steer away from the object and not hit the object. So that is the job of the ABS system, basically. So as Seth said, um, most of the vehicles coming up are using ABS systems. And also, of late, most of the cars that are also coming in are trying to convert every mechanical component of the vehicle little by little into electrical components. Okay, so um, um, most of the vehicles are also employing electronic brake boosters or electronic brake servo units. So instead of having a brake servo with a master cylinder attached to it, you have an electronic brake um, booster which has the master cylinder attached to it and you also have the ABS system to all in one unit. Now, Seth was also talking about metering valves, residual valves, combination valves, and adjustable proportional valves. All these components are now incorporated into one, which the ABS is doing. Perfectly distributing the fluid to whichever wheels they feel um, is, is nearing the locking up process. Um, the brake ABS does that job. Okay, when it comes to metering or regulating these brake fluid pressures to all the wheels, the master uh, the ABS module is also there to do that job. So this is just um, a conventional type of braking system where we want to demonstrate how the transfer is done from the master cylinder when the brake pedal is initiated to the front wheels and the rear wheels as well. So um, that is basically what we want our viewers to know. So, having said that, this brings us to the conclusion of today's episode. Well, that does it for today's episode. In our next episode, we'll be talking about the types of braking systems. As usual, remember, don't drink and drive, don't text and drive, and always practice defensive driving. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed our video, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on all our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and TikTok at Otoshark Ghana for other educational